Welcome to your video over using properties of equality to solve equations. Now, this is um, 1.1, and I'm going to call it A because it's the first example. And if you don't um, have a textbook or know what textbook we're using, then we'll just um, reference the um, name of the video, which is using properties of, equa of equality to solve equations. And uh, I'm going to do three examples, and I'm also going to throw out um, some vocabulary with which you'll need to be familiar. So let's go ahead with the first example. And um, the example just tells us to solve. Now the very first thing that um, is obvious about this question is w we need to know what in the world does it mean to solve? Okay, and, and this thing, what in the world does it mean, um, this thing that we're looking at, we, we call this an equation. You're probably going, well, this is really basic. Well, it is basic, but we really need to know what an equation is. So I'd like for you to make sure that you research that and know what the definition of an equation is. And then, and then we're going to take a look at what it means to solve the, an, an equation. So this uh, equation is an, an open sentence. And what in the world does that mean? It means that um, it's neither true nor false. It's neither true nor false until we find out the value of x. Dep depending on the value of x, it would be a true, equa a true sentence or a uh, false sentence. So we're going to go ahead and solve using properties of e equality. Now, we know the properties of equality. If, for instance, if I add one to s the same, s excuse me, if I add one to both sides of, equa of an equation, it, oops, hold on. Ooh, pardon me, phone call. So if I add 1 to both sides of an equation, we know that that's not going to change the truth value of it. In other words, it's going to remain true or you know, whatever. So um, it's neither true nor false at this point. So I add uh, 1 to both sides. It ends up 4x equals 12. I'm going to go ahead and divide by 4, divide by 4, and I get x is 3. So this open sentence is true only for the value 3. When the variable has a value of 3, then this thing is a true statement. So um, to solve means to find the value of the variable that makes the sentence true, right? We're looking for it to be true. And so the only thing that would actually do that would be the 3. So there is, a, there is a, an example of solving an equation. And this is how we write that. There's the solution set the solution set. There is only one value of x that makes it true. So let's go on to the second example. I'm going to introduce some fractions and to our terms. And remember a term is just, <coughs> pardon me, a monomial with addition or subtraction between it and the next thing as opposed to multiplication. And Okay, so um, I'm looking at this and I see fractions uh, with the x. Now, you know that I could actually rewrite this and say this is the same as x over 3 because 1 third times x over 1 would be the same thing. So I could write this either way, 1 third x or x over 3. So this is uh, basically has a denominator with it and um, the 5 doesn't have a denominator. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to give everybody a denominator e if it doesn't have it. So if I already have, I'm presented with fractions, I'm going to go through and make all of the terms fractions. The reason I'm going to do that is I'm going to attempt to get rid of them as soon as possible. Here's what I mean by that. I'm going to look at all of the denominators now. I have a 1, a 2, and a 3 as my denominators. And what I want to know is what is the LCM, the least common multiple for a 1, a 2, and a 3, and I come up with a 6. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by 6. And what's that going to do for me? Well, I can multiply both sides of an equation by anything. That's the um, multiplication property of equality. There's another property. But when I do it by 6, excuse me, then look what happens. That's 6 over 1 times 1 over 3, just this first term using the distributive. And I get 6 over 3, which is indeed a 2. Now, look what happened. Me multiplying by the common denominator, or the least common multiple, turned that fraction into a nice, neat little integer. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. 1 half of 6 is a 3x. Excuse me. Now that's minus 60. So now what I've done is I've eliminated the fractions. Now I'm going to go ahead and continue um, solving the equation. What I want to make sure uh, of, first of all, is before I move things from side to side, I want to make sure I don't have any like terms on the left. So those are not like terms. Nor do I have any like terms on the right. But I do have some 
um, like terms across the parentheses. So I'm going to, first thing, I'm going to get my variables in one spot. That's the first thing I want to do. So always get your variables in one spot. If you have other things that you need to do, that's fine, but get the variables in one spot first. Usually tends to make it easier. All right, so now I have my variable in one location. Now I'm going to continue with my addition property of equality, which is what we do with that, and then I'm going to end up with 1x, and that's equal to 30, which is the same as x equals 30. So to solve this equation just means, well, let's find the value of x that makes it true. Well, what makes it true when x is 30? So we call that the solution set. The solution set. Now this set doesn't look like it's very large because it has one value in it, but there'll be times when uh, there's more than one solution uh, value in the solution set, but we just know that this is actually the solution to this equation. Okay, and then one last example, and let's go with number three. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll go with 3x minus 2 in parentheses. And here we go. So this first one, oh, excuse me, this, this third one here, we're going to go ahead and first thing, we're going to distribute. So we're going to get 12x minus 8. We're going to distribute here. And we're going to go 5. Now don't forget that to negative 7. You could do this if you wanted to. Cause that to be a plus and negative, and we know that that's a plus, and then that's going to be a negative 7x, and that's going to be a positive 7. Now, notice the right side has like terms right here and here. I'm not going to do any moving from one side of the equal to the other side of the equal until these are combined. This is going to turn into a 12 plus negative 7x. Okay, please get your like terms together before you begin to move from one side, excuse me, of the equals to the other. So now I'm ready to gather my x's in one location, which means, again, use the addition property of equality, and here we go, 12, and that's going to be, what, 19x minus 8. Now I'm going to use, get my other like terms on one side all together, so that's going to be 20, and that looks like that's 19. We're going to have a fraction as an answer, but uh, welcome to the real world, right? So here we go. We get that x is 20 nineteenths. Now, college algebra isn't usually going to ask you to make that into a mixed number, so we're going to say that that's fine just like it is. So our answer ends up being 20 nineteenths. That's our solution set. To solve that equation means to put a value of 20 nineteenths in for x. Okie doke. Thanks for watching.